My name is Vladi Fiume and I'm the CTO of Alera Solutions. In today's Dash Mini Lecture, I'm going to give you a quick introduction on natural language processing. First, let me give you a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to give you an introduction of what NLP is, why we need it, and what is its history. Then I'm going to talk about the components and processes that go into natural language processing, what the state of the art is, and I'm going to round it off by discussing about the future of NLP. Let's start by answering what is natural language processing. It is the processing of information contained in natural language tags, and the overarching goal is to make computers learn our language rather than we learn theirs. So instead of writing hundreds of lines of code to make the computer do a single task, we can just communicate what we want from the computer, just like we would ask a human. We need NLP. Well, besides the example that I just gave you, language is a hallmark of human intelligence. So, if we want to achieve a true artificial intelligence, we need to break the barrier between the way we communicate and the way computers understand us. We also know that text is the largest repository of human knowledge, and you can think of all the books and all the written information that is on the internet. If we want to truly leverage all of it, we need to use computers that can understand it. So, how did NLP begin as a science? Well, in 1950s, Alan Turing wrote the paper Computing Machinery and Intelligence, in which he introduces the famous imitation game, which is now known as a Turing test. In this test, a human evaluator would judge natural language conversation between a human and a machine designed to generate human-like responses. If the evaluator could not reliably tell the machine from the human, the machine would be said to have passed the test. The test results would not depend on the machine's ability to give correct answers to the questions, only on how closely its answers resemble those a human would give. The Turing test is still used to this day to test conversational agents, but it has devolved into a game in which systems are created to fool the evaluator instead of trying to develop a truly intelligent machine. Separately from the Turing test, at the end of the 1960s, MIT developed one of the first natural language systems, Shurudu. While it was a very simplistic and does not exib exhibit any kind of intelligent behavior, this rule-based system could understand commands given in a natural language and also maintain a state of the world. So as you can see in this image, we have multiple different geometrical shapes and you could ask the system, for example, to pick the red block. It would understand what the red block is, it will pick it up, you could then ask it to move it somewhere else in the world and it would still remember the whole layout of the world. With the evolution of the field, today NLP is described by two main components. Natural language understanding, which means that we have a system that takes a spoken or typed sentence, analyzes it and acts upon it. And natural language generation, which means that we have a system that first has to figure out what it wants to say and then work out a way to express it in a natural language, for example, English. To perform natural language understanding, we need to follow these steps. Morphological or lexical analysis deals with the text at the individual word level. It looks for morphemes, the smallest unit of a word. For example, the word irrationally can be broken into IR, the prefix, rational, the root, and LI, the suffix. Lexical analysis finds the relation between these morphemes and converts the word into its root form. A lexical analyzer also assigns the possible part of speech, or POS, to the word. It takes into consideration the dictionary of the language for this. For example, the word character can be used both as a noun or a verb. Syntax analysis ensures that a given piece of text is correctly structured. It tries to parse the sentence to check correct grammar at sentence level. Given the possible part of speech generated from the previous step, a syntax analyzer assigns parts of speech tags based on the sentence structure. For example, patient has a headache is a sentence that has correct syntax, while patient headache has a is a sentence that has incorrect syntax. For semantic analysis, consider the sentence, the apple ate a banana. Although the sentence is syntactically correct, it doesn't make sense because apples can't eat. Semantic analysis looks for meaning in the given sentence. It also deals with combining words into phrases. This course deals with the effect of a previous sentence on the sentence in consideration. In the text, Jack is a sick individual. He spends most of the time in the hospital. Here, this course assigns he to refer to Jack. 
The final stage of NLU is pragmatics, which interprets the given text using information from previous steps. Given the sentence, send me my answers, is an order or a request to give the patient its answers to the survey. Natural language generation can be seen as the opposite of natural language understanding. While with NLU, we start our process at word level and build up to the whole sentence. With NLG, we go from the higher level to the lower level. The steps to perform natural language generation are discourse planning. The basic content of the text is selected for the readership and is organized coherently. Theories of text organization may be used to find good ordering of information. Surface realizer. The information is split into sentences and paragraphs. An appropriate use is made out of conjunctions, pronouns, etc. Realization. Grammatically correct sentences are produced. A grammar of the language, for example English, may be used, and knowledge of when different grammatical forms are appropriate is also implemented. I would here like to take a moment and focus more on the application of NLG in healthcare. Good communication is vital in healthcare, both among healthcare professionals and between healthcare professionals and their patients. Well-written documents describing and or explaining the information in a structured database may be easier to comprehend and even more convincing than the structured data in a table that is often obtained. Documents may be automatically generated from structured data using techniques from the field of natural language generation. These techniques are concerned with how the content, organization, and language used in a document can be dynamically selected depending on the audience and the context. They have been used to generate healthcare education materials, explanation, medical reports, and progress notes. Before moving on to discussing the state of the art in NLP, I would like to quickly discuss Alela Solutions and its application in the healthcare sector. What we at Alela Solutions offer is a novel way for data capture using natural language understanding and for patient engagement using natural language generation through the use of a conversational agent, also known as a chatbot. Using our conversational agent, we will be able to collect more data for the researchers while also improving the patient experience by getting rid of the surveys used in clinical trials. The data capture component is used to figure out what are the symptomatic terms received from the patient, while the conversational agent needs to figure out an appropriate way to respond to these terms. Our solution represents a great example of how the two components of NLP can come together to improve the healthcare sector. Moving on to the state of the art in NLP, I will discuss recurrent neural networks and transformers. For natural language processing, conventionally, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs, build representations of each word in a sentence in a sequential manner, meaning one word at a time. Intuitively, we can imagine a uh, RNN layer as a conveyor belt with the words being processed on it autoregressively from left to right. So for, for example here, this is a sentence, is going to be processed one word at a time from left to right. At the end, we get a hidden feature for each word in the sentence, which we pass to the next RNN layer or use it for our NLP task of choice. This kind of task can be either translation, sentiment analysis, what the next word in the sentence is, or what part of speech a word in the sentence is. Now I'll move on to transformers, which were initially introduced for machine translation, but have gradually replaced recurrent neural networks in the mainstream NLP. The architecture takes a fresh approach to representation learning, doing away with recurrence entirely. Transformers build features of each word using a so-called attention mechanism to figure out how important all the words in the sentence are with respect to the aforementioned word. So whenever we process a single word, for example here, another, we will also look at how the other words affected. This is a sentence and how important each is with respect to the word another. Transformers are used in the best performing NLP system developed so far. For example, BERT, developed by Google, and GPT-3, which you may have heard of, developed by OpenAI. Trained on billions of words, BERT's main advantage is that it utilizes bidirectional learning to gain context of words. 
meaning it understands the context of words by reading it both ways, from left to right and right to left simultaneously. It is trained on long dependencies between the text of various contexts. BERT works on encoding mechanism to generate the language. Well, unlike BERT, GPT-3 models are unidirectional. Their advantage is the sheer volume of words it is pre-trained on. This allows users to fine-tune NLP tasks with very few examples to perform a given task. GPT relies on the decoder part of the transformer to generate the text. It relies on previous values to predict current values. The bidirectional model, on the other hand, learns context based on the words around it instead of just relying on the word before or after the consider word. One other aspect where the two systems differ is the task they are trained on. So here you can see that BERT is actually trained on two unsupervised tasks together. Mass language modeling, which means you have a sentence, you know the correct sentence, you remove some of the words, and then you ask the model to fill in those words, and that's how it gets trained. And then you have next sentence prediction, where again, you already know that you have two sentences that have a certain order, you remove one of the sentences, and you ask the model to predict what that sentence should be. Next up, here we can see a better comparison between BERT and GPT-3, and we can understand why GPT-3 is actually outperforming BERT by a lot. BERT has 340 million parameters, while GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters. At the same time, while BERT is trained on only 2.5 billion training tokens, which represent words, GPT-3 3 is trained on an astoundingly 500 billion training tokens. I would like to end this mini lecture by discussing what I see as the future of NLP. Natural language processing has been around for a while now, but it's only recently that it's been making huge leaps and bounds in terms of improvements. From search engines like Google and Bing to chatbots, NLP is everywhere. Some things that NLP can be used for include text-based learning, search, social media analytics, web search, document management, content analysis, and data analytics and visualization. Most people don't realize just how much NLP is improving and some of the insane changes that are happening, but it's said to completely change almost all industries that we know. As mentioned earlier, at Alera Solutions, we aim at improving a part of the healthcare system using chatbots or conversational agents. Most recently, Lambda, a chatbot developed by Google, has made the news for achieving consciousness. Well, I don't really believe that to be true. The advancements made by this conversational technology cannot be overstated. Specifically, being able to appropriately react to the sentiment expressed by the human it's conversing with. This is vital in our field. We wouldn't want our conversational agent to reply with very good for a patient that is complaining about migraines. Appropriate empathetic response to symptomatic terms are something to strive for in the healthcare conversational agents. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this mini lecture has helped you better understand the field of natural language. Also, please feel free to follow Alera Solutions on LinkedIn for more updates about our startup. Thank you again.